and welcome to our harbor maintenance track. And first of all, uh, who are we? Uh, my name is Orlin. I'm harbor, the harbor community manager and contributor, CNCF ambassador, and I'm also working at SUSE as a technical advocate. And that's Vadim. So, hello everyone. My name is Vadim. I'm one of the maintainers of harbor, and I work for a company who does provide support to harbor. Um, yeah. So, welcome to our session. First of all, who doesn't know what Harbor is? One person? Right. So <laughs> I hope you can learn something. Who's using Harbor in production like every day? Ooh, half of the room? Great. Thank you. Thank hey, you for hey, coming. Hey. So Harbor is one of the graduated projects at CNCF. It's a it's container registry. Uh, so many of you who are running that in production know that. So it's a self-hosted. Um, solution that you can install in or on-prem or in the cloud and you can consume it on your own. So the key, the key features of Harbor, there are a lot. We are bundled with features, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but they, for example, we have RBAC, we have replication, we have vulnerability scanning and policy and extendability in terms of uh, authentication, for example. Um, the superpowers, which are what makes Harbor interesting from the use case scenario is the actual airbag which was involved during the time of the first creation of it to what we have right now uh you can also if you want to interrupt me and add something go ahead uh so for example we can uh integrate harbor in idp and have sso so you can use your own backend for authorization um as we have uh, CISO happy so you have everything in one place so it's uh it's observable and you can uh, do vulnerability checks and audit trails and everything. The ops people on the other hand, they can rely on auto automation, RESTful API, and we have the Terraform provider, the Pulumi, and now we're working on the Harvard CLI. On the, on the other hand, we have garbage collector, we have quotas and policies, which allows you to, op um, to operate your harbor much more easier. What's the big news? I'm not sure if that's visible from everyone, but I'm happy bear and I'm, I'm having my stack running. We released Harbor 212 just five days ago, six days ago. I'm not sure which date is today, but uh, on November 8th, uh, we added some new features. We've improved a lot of things. So we added a new functionality to the proxy cache. So now, now you can bandwidth your throughput for the proxy cache. So if you have your Harbor somewhere on the remote location with not the best connection, you can do some stuff uh, to limit that so you don't eat up all your bandwidth for, uh, for example, replicating. We have improved a lot of things around SBOM uh, capabilities, uh, and in particular, how you consume from the UI. Uh, you can see the full list of all the things that we did. Uh, we've added more audit logging for robot accounts. So now when your robot account is doing something in, on your Harbor instance, you can see much more granular information about that. And uh, you can see the timestamps and everything else. And long requested feature was to add a full access robot accounts. So now your robot accounts are not only capable to work with artifacts, but they can also um, uh, do some system configuration or harbor. They can create other robot accounts. So pretty much you can automate a lot of things now with the robot accounts. We have around 100. Uh, okay. bug fixes and new co new contributions to Harbor just for the last release. So please go and check our uh, release notes and what we've added and what you're interested in. So um, I did a light, uh, lightning talk yesterday uh, on the S-bomb. I'm going to read you a, li a little bit so you can know uh, what I'm talking about. I hope everybody can see that, right? Okay, mm -hmm. not this one, sorry. So I have my Harbor instance over here, and um, I've created a project just for, for today, as always, uh, KubeCon NA24. And I've, put, uh, I've pushed the latest Nginx image. That's actually, I did it just five minutes ago. <laughs> so that's very accurate information over there. So um, as you can see, uh, it was automatically scanned, and I run, because I had to prepare for the demo, I run the SBOM generation action beforehand. But if I want to do that again, I can just select the artifact, that's the, the latest stack and the SHA, and I can do, for example, generate SBOM. That will queue, that, that, that generation in Trivi, it will take a, a while. Um, 
to generate that test bomb for that particular uh, tag. But what you're interested more, I think, is not to generate it by hand like this. That's kind of uh, not the most optimal way to do that. But if you go on the project level, so that's not on the whole system, that's on our project KubeCon NA24, you go on configuration. It's a bit small, this one, so that's the reason why it's like on the three dots. So you go on configuration, and those two checkboxes over here are the things that I want to sh talk about. It's the SBOM generation. So you can, you can enable that, and every time you push a new uh, tag, new, new artifact, it gets the SBOM generated automatically, so you don't go and click. And you can do the same thing for the uh, interrogation services. And you go save, and that's it. So next time when I push an image, uh, an attack, it will be, um, the S-bomb will be generated automatically. So if I go back to the artifact, our S-bomb is already created. And if I go, if I scroll on additions, that's the additional things that we provide as a metadata for the artifacts. So we have all the vulnerabilities. And in this case, I want to show you the S-bomb. So you can see all the packages, so practically, there's one. I hope everybody knows what this bomb is. If it's not, it's the list of bio materials um, for our uh, our software components in our artifact. So you can browse that over here, or you can download it. Uh, by downloading it, it's it's a JSON file, and you can consume that somewhere else. In this particular case, no pun intended. Uh, that was the first one that I found on the internet. Was the Rancher um, viewer? So we do SPDX for now. Um, we are, there were some ideas from community to do Cyclone DX as well as a format for the SBOM. If you're one of these people, just come and speak with us. So you can, you can consume that same SBOM in any other uh, SPDX uh, capable viewer and you can extract all the information that you need. That's from the UI. You can do the same thing through the API. So you can do a call and you can download that and actually ship it or consume it somewhere else. Uh, with that, that simple demo is done, and I'm going to give the mic to Vadim. Yeah, I think to addition, you can even um, create events, webhooks, so that when the scan is completed, you get a webhook, and then you can process this even further, the S-bombs and the vulnerabilities via webhooks. Okay, let's talk about the uh, ecosystem of Harbor, or what, is, what things are around Harbor, and what we have in mind for the next releases. Right. Uh, one topic that's on our mind is the Harbor Operator. You probably, I'm, I'm not sure if you know about the Harbor Operator, but the Harbor Operator does two things. So the one thing the Harbor Operator does is it installs you Harbor instance, and the other thing the Harbor Operator does, it also provides some configuration. Right. The situation of the Harbor Operator is the following, that it's not really maintained, and we're kind of a, on the verge of deprecating it and archiving it, while on the other hand, we still have requests from the community, from the people uh, who tell that they are in interested in the hub operator or using the operator, but there is not much movement from the community in keeping this hub operator alive. So we're currently looking for additional contributors. So if you are using the operator and you want to keep using it and keep improving it, so we're asking you to join the community to, um, to, to be able to work on that. Um, and then maybe we can split the operator in the future in two parts. So one uh, part of the operator will be responsible for the installation and the other part of the operator will be responsible for the configuration. So we can extend the configuration of the operator with more and more functionalities that we can use CRDs to maintain uh, Harbor uh, outside of the installation. So you can install it via Helm and operate it via, via CRD or uh, yeah, just, just like Terraform or Pulumi. Right. So this is an important topic. Um, the future of operator is a bit open now. Uh, if you're interested to co starting contributing to open source, I think this is a great chance. Um, another project from the ecosystem um, is the Harbor CLI. There are quite a few Harbor CLIs up on the uh, on GitHub. Uh, however, there is not, I would say, an official one or one which is a, kind of a more complete. So we're working on that, and uh, we're planning to release, or yeah. I mean, it's already released, right? So we, we, we're planning to long-term support a Harbor CLI that will match with the version of uh, the, the, the current version of Harbor, right? Um, so you can use the 
CLI in your pipelines, in your you know, GitHub Actions, GitLab CI, and you can automate uh, some workflows with the CLI directly. And it's very nice because it has JSON outputs, YAML outputs, and also the, for the user, a table output, so you can uh, use it for all uh, different uh, purposes. Uh, it's already available. You can go to Go Harbor Harbor CLI and you can download it. There is a, a version of it available. It doesn't have all the features of the UI, for example, but it has some functionality to keep keep, uh, keep uh, to get started, right? And the interesting part, if you're kind of a young engineer or student, this may be interesting for you. This whole project was developed by uh, LFX mentorship part of the LFX mentorship program, and the LFX mentorship program is the Linux Foundation mentorship program, where young students or graduates can um, you know, join open source projects, get paid for uh, joining open source projects, projects for three months, they get funding, and they can work on interesting open source projects like the Harbor CLI. And this project was, I would say, to 80-90% built by, uh, by um, yeah, LFX mentees over the last one and a half years. Okay, then we have another ZAP project in the Harbor ecosystem, which is called Harbor Satellite. And Harbor Satellite is a yeah, containerized artifact distribution solution. So it basically is a, a registry at the edge, right? or not registry at the edge, but registries at edges. So it's basically designed to be able to manage hundreds and thousands of edge locations. And you will be able to distribute your software to those thousand locations from a central uh, Harbor instance, right? And the typical use cases that we see for Harbor Satellite is, of course, Edge, right? Edge IoT, it's very small, you can run it on a small device even, uh, but you can also run it on Kubernetes cluster. And this is one of my uh, coolest features there, is you can run it also on Kubernetes cluster if you have multiple, a fleet of Kubernetes clusters and you wanna manage your artifact distribution to those clusters centrally from Harbor, you can uh, use satellite to do so. And there's of course like the typical use cases like environments with low connectivity, uh, with not fast connectivity. Um, and then you have also kind of resource constraints uh, because the devices are typically small um, you want to have a resource constraint deployment there and maybe probably an easy one with a single binary. Um, and then you can use also the satellite as a global CDN. So you can use it as a CDN to distribute your images globally if you're uh, up, up for that. And there are a couple of use cases and I'm just gonna highlight you. So it, it consists of Harbor, right? So Harbor is the, the part where you manage what artifacts should be located on what site. So this is the part where you manage in Harbor what artifacts should be located on which site. The ground, ground control is the part which manages those devices or those sites. So it's kind of a device management solution. And then we have uh, over the network boundary, we have uh, the satellite, which the satellite has only outbound connection. There is no inbound connection to the satellite. There's always outbound connection. And this happens because the satellite is able to fetch the state. So there's kind of a, kind of a, there's a reconciliation loop going on to the satellite. So it basically fetches the state from, um, from, from Harbor that it should have. And the state contains the configuration state, the image state, or the artifact state, and also event states. So that it can then download the state, reconcile it, and download the artifacts that it needs. It can then trigger events after uh, after the uh, you know images are, for example, downloaded. It can trigger events so that the events that are triggered can trigger containers, and these containers can do, for example, deployments, updates, and so forth. So you can use this process also to update your workloads on the edge from remote, right? And so the basic part of the satellite is it's completely, how do you call it? It's, it's a zero touch, right? So there's no, there's basically no configuration on the satellite needed. It's everything is done from remote. And uh, yeah, we're currently working on it. We have a few uh, parts of it, not few, but quite a few parts already working. So it's basically usable already. Um, this is the repository. Um, currently it's, uh, in, in, in this place, but it will be shifted over to Harbor once it's mature enough. And um, yeah, so if you're interested in this topic, this is a, a, yeah, a current work in progress. 
And there is one interesting feature I didn't tell, tell you about. It's about the, the Kubernetes part. So if you're running satellite on Kubernetes, so what, what it will allow you to do is you can run a stateful registry on an entirely stateless cluster, right? So we w would like to have that you as a user, Kubernetes user, uh, would choose to install the satellite as the first thing that you're going to install on your cluster, but even before you install the, 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 the network, the storage and the ingress and things like this. So you install a satellite and this will then fetch the state that it needs from, from remote and it can run on a completely state, state, it can run a stateful registry on an entirely stateless cluster, right? So there's like a, some magic going on, thanks to Spiegel and uh, Philip. And this isn't really an awesome feature for uh, maintaining uh, kind of a fleet of Kubernetes clusters, right? Um, the other part where we kind of are moving with Harbor is uh, AI topic, right? So I mean, everybody talks about AI and we, I mean, yeah, I think we cannot hear it anymore, but AI is, a, AI is still important topic. And we see today already that are people using or abusing our registry for um, storing the AI models. And we think that Harbor and OCI are almost perfect for managing AI models. I say almost, because you can use OCI and mount it directly as a volume in your Kubernetes cluster, which is an awesome feature since 131. Um, however, there is, of course, the, the problem with large image sizes. You know, if you have like uh, AI models that are hundreds of gigabytes and then you uh, iterate over these models and you, you produce every day 100 gigabytes of data. This gets a bit cumbersome, so we need to find a way how we can reduce this and kind of maybe granular break down the layer in even smaller parts, for example, right? And there is like multiple efforts going on currently from multiple yeah, organizations or multiple teams. Um, there is a very interesting talk tomorrow about exactly this topic in more detail that I'm just explaining now from uh, Steven. Steven Zhu, Steven Zhu he's also here. He's going to explain in more detail how this is uh, intended to work and how we can uh, extend the OCI specification or use the OCI specification to distribute AI models uh, on Kubernetes primarily. Right? Um, then the other topic for the next release, the, the 2.13 release, is um, we would like to improve our audit logs. Right? So improve audit logs means we want to have more events, like tracking more events in the audit log. And more events means it gets more load and more load needs. We need to get improve on the performance on, on the audit logs. So we're looking on the ways how we can you know, create the audit logs async and uh, optimize the performance maybe with a different backend so that we can out trail more, uh, more, yeah, more events uh, on, in the audit logs. Um, yeah, so this is the, the outlook for yeah. the next and 13 If weeks. you're interested yeah. to join and to provide your feedback on what do you think we should add in the next release, uh, please scan the QR code. That's the QR code who leads to our discussion GitHub. If you're not aware, that's how we collect our feature requests. And by collection, I mean in the most positive way, we collect them. That not necessarily means we're going to execute them because we kind of shorten uh, members. So, <clears throat> which leads me to our next stuff, community. Uh, as, I'm, as I'm the community manager, I have to say <laughs> some, some words about community. We have Slack, uh, we have multiple channels. We have our main channel, Harbor, and then we have Harbor Dash, and you can think of any topic that maybe it's related to Harbor. For example, Harbor Dev is where our Dev com, uh, discussions are made. Those uh, um, channels are super active, especially the, the, the first one, the Harbor. So if you have a question, please go there and ask some of us or some of the community is going to answer. We have a, a mailing list, Harbor users, Harbor dev, the same usage if you do not prefer to use Slack. We have Twitter or X, whatever you call it these days. Uh, and we have a bi-weekly community meeting, which we combine community meeting plus office hours. So you can just come along and hang out with us for an hour. Or if you have some questions, just come and ask, and we can try to do our best to answer them. I, uh, I'm one of these folks who doesn't believe much of in stars in GitHub, but that looks so cool. For the last year, we've collected more than uh, 4,000 stars, which 
means a lot from one perspective. So if some of you give us a star for the last one year, thank you very much. Um, so we're kind of going up in terms of stars and, 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 and uh, forks. So thank you. That's a good, good metrics for us that people pay attention to our project and our work. Um, some words about New York members. So, uh, Mirantis announced they're going to migrate their private registry to Harbor. So keep an eye on this one. Uh, they're go they're uh, planning to be a full member of the community uh, in that regard. Obviously, SUSE are all <laughs> also extending their or our effort in the uh, Harbor space. Last but not the least is contribute. Um, that's a kind of ask or uh, uh, like, um, how's that? Ask for help? No, it's not ask for help, but please. Opportunity. Uh, the opportunity, yes. <laughs> uh, if you're uh, uh, looking to join um, very vibrant and um, easy to work with project, and if you're in the area of UI, UX, and you know Angular or Node.js, please reach out to us. Uh, we're here for the next few days. I'm going to show that um, and talk with us how you can join and what kind of effort you can provide to the uh, to the project, so we can work together to make the Harbor UI better. Uh, also, we would like to have someone uh, who is more engaged in project management or release management. We kind of uh, we we're doing it, but we're not on the level that we want to do it. So, if someone is feeling that. Uh, he wants to uh, or she wants to improve in that area or you think that you can help with that please do so and again contact uh, us again however operator operator needs contribute to some maintainers so if you're using it or if you feel like you can take over with, with it again talk to us thank you very much that's how you can contact us that QR code goes to goharbor.io slash community, where you can find all the information about how to talk with us, how to join the project, where we hang out, and so on and so forth. Don't forget, we have a project pavilion uh, in the project pavilion area on the down floor, two floors down, on the 9A uh, kiosk on the PM shift. So it's going to be uh, all the afternoons. Uh, we're going to be me, Vadim. Steven over there and, and Sergio, we're going to be hanging around. So if you have questions about the project, how you can join, how you can help, how you can use, whatever, just come and, and talk to us. You can scan the QR code if you need more information. So that's everything for us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have time for questions. Yeah, we have some time for questions, but you can clap. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, oh, thanks a lot. Uh, can you fix the mic there, please? Just give a second. Yeah, can you try again? Hello? Hello? Yep. Uh, so thanks for the great event. I appreciate that. Uh, so my question is actually for versioning, but actually someone already helped me to uh, go to the 2.12. Actually, actually, that one is more stable and version, so probably we go on that one. And my next question is about the performance issues. And so due to the development team's requirement, they're asking us to get the image from a remote registry every uh, five minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, create, generating a bunch of, you know, we put the rotation policy for one day for tag. However, it creates, generates so many logs and garbage. Uh, we ended up uh, eating the old disks on our VM. So we create the scripts to clean the garbage and cleaning the log uh, files, stuff like that. Uh, so my question is how are we going to perform, uh, improve the performance of the harbor in that scenario specifically, thanks. So you mean improving the performance of Harbor replicating images? Yeah, no, actually replicating images is fine, but it takes getting all my disk uh, space on my- uh, And the yeah. disk space is yeah. basically occupied by logs? Correct, or? yeah. Okay, I mean, there is already an opportunity. I think if you're still on 2.5, you don't have this capability, but if you're using a newer uh, version of Harbor, you can stream your logs to somewhere else, right? So you can stream your log to your uh, a CIM system, uh, or you can also delete part of the logs. I mean, you cannot delete all the logs, but I think you can delete audit logs. You can create an audit log garbage collection so that audit logs are maintained for uh, 30 days, 60 days, whatever. And there's also the capabilities of you know forwarding the audit logs to another system. So you get uh, pretty much with this option quite far. Um, 
there is the other point is like the executions, right? There is not, I think there's one limitation currently that the execution lock is not cleaned up, but there's also something that you can normally kind of clean up once a year or something. This is what we, for example, do. Thanks a lot, appreciate it. Sorry, yeah. Uh, maybe a microphone on? on? <laughs> Second. Can I try that? No. no. So maybe you can hop over to the other side. Oh, no, wait, wait. wait. Okay. I just had a quick question around the Harbor satellite. Um, yeah. Are, is there, is there going to be the ability to kind of granularly select what can be propagated to the satellite versus what can't be propagated to the satellites? Yeah, exactly. So there's going to be an option in, in Harbor where you can granularly uh, create, uh, op create uh, select kind of a regular expression style. What you're going to, uh, what's going to be available in what sites or what site groups so you can uh, be able to, met, to to group together multiple sites or create multiple groups and then you can replicate to those groups and these groups will, will be then present on multiple sites so you can kind of have a grouping and labeling system and you will be able to select any particular image to be um, selected for the replication to site and the site is a state a kind of there's a reconciliation loop so it means that if you're removing images from your source this will be also removed from the site right Perfect. So they 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 kept in sync. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? We have a few more minutes for questions. Yeah. Uh, just a small question. You you said you supported Terraform. Are you um, supporting Open Tofu? Uh, pardon? Open Tofu. Open Tofu. I think it should work also with Open Tofu. I'm pretty confident that it should also work with Open Tofu because we don't use anything fancy in Terraform in terms of uh, capabilities. So I'm pretty much sure that it's kind of a backward compatible and also feature compatible with Tofu. Okay. Uh, Thank you. But if you're interested in that, we'll be more than happy to get some help and to test it out and yeah, maybe patch it, right? Thank you. <laughs> if it, yeah. Do you guys have a built-in scheduler or like enforcement for CVEs levels inside of the containers to stop them being pulled at a certain point? Or is that something that we would have to define capabilities afterwards to like remove and clean those up? Not necessarily at the same time, right? But more of, you right. see a CVE trivi scan come back through on one of those that has like two crits, one of them's like a very high level. We should stop it from being pulled inside the network. Right? Yeah, you can, you, can define, you can define a policy to what <coughs> level you are okay to to ship images. Yeah. So if, if the image, for example, says uh, you're not allowing images with, with high, so everything that comes out, comes out with high won't be able to yeah. to be deployed. Okay. But the, the the problem with this approach is because you're not the only one, and many people, you know, uh, failed with this approach in the past. Even though we have these capabilities, I think it's not the right thing to do in a lot of use cases, because the problem is not, when you pull an image, right, at day one, it might be vulnerability free, but if you try to pull this image later on, there might be some vulnerabilities and you'll not be able to pull, and you have now production workloads running, right, um, which when it was deployed a, a month ago was totally fine, and now you, you can uh, reschedule your pods on, on the cluster, and now this has the vulnerability, uh, and you know you cannot deploy your application. This is like two morning in the night, and you know the ops people are not going to be happy about that. Just to find out that uh, you have this feature. I think this this functionality, while it sounds great, in reality it, it has a really uh, many drawbacks, and you need to be really really cautious uh, how you want to use it. Right. Uh, so like remediation scenario, right? Like so you get that it should alert the members who have pulled it. I mean theoretically, right? or to the administrator saying, hey, this one has a high CVE, it's going to be available for 30 or 60 days. 
Another way exactly. Market, so know? what normally you should do is you should be able to um, kind of collect the CVEs, right? So you collect the CVEs from your from your hardware instance, and you collect your pull uh, pull times from the hardware instance, and then you can process it in, in a kind of an external system, Extra, okay. and you can then uh, react to those events. So I, okay. I think hardware is not the right place to do it in one place, but I think we we provide the the data to do so, and because the requirements are so so different on the consumer side, we cannot, I think it will be really difficult to incorporate this into Harbor. But it sounds like to me, if I use the Harbor CLI, I might be able to run some sort of scheduler in a cron job or something to kick off an email to somebody, you know, saying here these, besides, because I don't know if Harbor has like SNMP or whatever, STMP built in or. Anything. Exactly, right. yeah. I mean, you can even create webhooks on image pools, right? So that every time an image is pulled, there's a webhook, mm -hmm. and this webhook maybe then controls if there are s critical CVs, for example, right? And then you can trigger notifications th almost in real time then. Right, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, are there any other questions? Yeah, if you're not brave enough to ask questions, you can also come later to, to the booth, yep. and we'll be there, right? Okay. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah.